Let's go a little bit further and pass a player name via parameter. So as a client, we expect that if we send our player name as a parameter, then we get a nice message saying, welcome John. And accordingly here, and here. Okay, and uh, we can implement it in the following way by adding to our routing DSL parameter which key is na player name which gives us a value to use in this scope and we well, let's rename this flow and we can pass this player name straight to the flow which can further be used in the message we send back to the client. And I think it should pass now. Yes, also it passes. I think it's time for refactoring our tests because they start to look really, really ugly. Uh, we can extract everything around the block inside check because it's the same in each method. So let's define assert WebSocket function, which takes assertions, uh, which is just a block, um, which takes web service client. Yes, and returns nothing. So does this function. And we're going to instantiate game service, web secret client, pass it a player name, which I think we should extract to the variable and extract it to the parameter. like this. <laughs> uh, and here we can simply call assertions passing it web service client. And now here we don't need this, this or any of this, we just need assert WebSocket and pass it a player name, which in this case is John. In this case, it is Ay, ay, ay. It should be second parameter list. Oh, like this. And same here. And I believe it should pass now. It doesn't because... <laughs> Oops, I forgot the little S here. Yes, it passes. 
we should also handle multiple playlist registration. So let's define our nest. And <coughs> there are going to be two clients. Unfortunately, we cannot use our assert WebSocket helper function because it is oriented for one player only. So let's call this first client John client and let's create another one called Andrew client. And John should expect that when Let's actually copy that. That when he calls our WebSocket with this parameter, he should receive back. Message, which is an JSON of arrays of players. So in this case, it's going just to be himself. So John, and that what that's what we expect on uh, successful con connection getting a message with all the players that are currently on the server. Similarly, Andrew, which connects second, should expect that once he connected, there are two players, John and himself. Okay, so as you can see, clearly we have to somehow manage a state inside our server. So the best way to do that in ACA-oriented uh, applications is to create an actor. So let's define one and call it game area actor. So this actor should receive messages about player joining, player leaving, and player doing some action. So in case player joined, and case player left, and player action. Well, in this case, let's uh, define player moved, move request, yes. We will implement it in the future, but let's just leave it empty for now. So how to handle state? You can define player's value, which is a collection of mutable linked hash map which takes a string as a key, which is a player name, and a player as a value. Okay, let's fix these errors. Let's create player joint. Mm, yes, player name string, and create a base trait for all our domain events. Is the tie oh, string? Hmm. I think it should be better to have a player here, not a string. Yes. So once we receive a player join, we add it to a player's map. Similarly, here we remove it from our, our map.
and here we don't do anything so far. Okay, now we have a game area actor, but we need a way to somehow notify other players that there is some change. So how do we notify outside world from within the actor? Well, we usually do it by sending a message. So what we actually need is not a player, but player with actor. In a moment it will become clear where the actor comes from, but for now let's just create player with uh, actor. And it's going to consist of player and actor. Okay, we have now a way to reach a player actor. So let's define a function that is exactly going to do it. Notify players changed. And here we, we're going to iterate over all players, map it to and send to each actor player together with some wrapped in some event which we can call players changed and it is go going to consist of a table of players simple like that so we get players this map it to actor only so this part we send an actor and event players changed with all the values from this map extracting player okay now that we have defined our actor let's actually use it so let's instantiate it and inside our mm, flow, inside our graph, let's use it as a sync. In a moment it will become clear why is it should be a sync. And here we provide what kind of messages should this sync accept. It should be game events because this actor receives game events and we provide it with game aria actor ref and this message is going to be emitted once the flow has been completed so in this case it's going to be player left so once the graph the flow completes uh, the player left the message is emitted and sent to the game area actor, which is handled here. Okay, now to join this together, we need to somehow convert raw WebSocket messages to our domain game events. In order to do that, we will define a messages to game events flow. which take messages and maps them to game events. So if this message is text message, because th these are the only messages we are handling, 
make some text inside. We let's convert it to player moved request because on the future we're going to send text messages with uh, contents like up, down, left, right. Okay, just like that. And we also need a flow that converts game events to messages to send it back to client. So in case it is player changed, we send back unmarshaled value into a J JSON. In order to do that, we need to import spray JSON and also import default JSON protocol and define player format for marshalling just like that and now we can simply convert players to json and wrap it all inside a text message okay let's connect it all together so on the one hand we have a materialization event that should be merged and also a messages to game event flow merge uh, yeah but merge is of type message it should be of type game event and the materialization should not emit some plain text but player joint message which consists of player and an actor but where do we get this actor because the materialized value as you can see is not used of type not used so we also somehow have to change materialization value so to do that we have to define actor source meaning the actor that our game area actor sends messages to so this is actually this actor which is kept inside player uh, with actor objects so let's call it player actor and define it like a source actor ref and it's going to accept accept game events um, let's define buffer size of 5 and overflow strategy fail and then we pass it to our graph and now the materialization value is actor ref So now that you have a materialization events sent to merge and messages coming from the client sending events also to merge, we can tell merge to send its messages straight to game area actor sync. And when the game area actor sync receives messages, it sends them to our player actor source. So since the game area actor sync sends message behind the scenes to the uh, player actor source, we need a handle to the player actor here. And now we can say that player actor events should be sent to where? Game events to message converter. Okay, and the resulting flow is message just to game events flow and 
the output is messages uh, game events to messages flow outlet. It may seem a little bit confusing, but let's take a look at the beautiful graph I draw to understand it better. 